Good morning, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Um, I want to thank Mike for the introduction. Um, Dr. Kennedy, who, you know, we've been here 14 out of the last 15 seasons in St. Joe and at Missouri Western. And I, I definitely sort of crossed over a bridge today because Dr. Kennedy allows me to call her Elizabeth now instead of doctor. <laughs> so I feel like we have a special bond. Um, it's obviously extra special coming back, being the reigning Super Bowl champs and back-to-back -back champs. So there's a lot of excitement in the air. There's a lot of excitement within our organization. There's a lot of excitement around the team, the players, the coaches, et cetera. And they're excited to be back. And they're excited to be back in St. Joe, who just treat us so well every single year. There's a reason we keep coming back. And it's a combination of the support that we got in 2010 when we partnered with the state of Missouri, Missouri Western, the city of St. Joe, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, um, to make this a reality and to be standing here 15 years later and talking about just how successful it has been is really a tribute to everyone involved. Um, specifically, I know um, Dr. Kennedy said this earlier, but I think it's important to acknowledge the team from Missouri Western, first and foremost, under the direction of Athletic Director Andy Carter and the entire operations team. Um, we're all here today in front of cameras and our staff around the room have been here for almost a week. They'll be here for many more weeks. Um, and the reality is that none of this works without the people from Missouri Western who put in effort every single day. Every year I come up here, I talk about how important every single rep is in our training camp, and with, without the efforts of those people, we cannot have every rep be successful. So we're very excited about that. I also want to echo what Mike mentioned, um, and it's a core to our organization, and that is the fan experience. One of the reasons I think this works so well here is that there's a common understanding of the priority that we put on the fan experience. And this is a big part of this. This is an introduction to our season for our fans. It's obviously a place that our fans can get up close and personal with our players and coaches, see them with their helmets off after practice, see them in the heat of competition. And it's an important aspect of how we create fans, how we retain fans, and how we create even more avid fans by doing this really, really well. So we're excited about that. Um, we, we've been partners with Mosaic up here at camp for many years, and Mike mentioned it. Um, it goes far beyond camp. It goes into the care of our fans, spectators, families, as well as coaches. There are a lot of stories that I could tell that HIPAA rules will not allow the, about just how these guys have stepped up and helped us in a lot of situations to avoid bigger issues and keep us operating very, very efficiently. A um, couple things about camp this year that I think are important. Um, you know, being the reigning Super Bowl champions, the the demand for training camp is extreme. Um, that's a really good thing. Um, we expect the crowds to be record-breaking. So far, um, the ticket reservations are up 30% over last year, which was a record-breaking year. Back to that fan experience uh, point, we, we have found that being able to have 5,000 people out of practice is about the sweet spot for us. Um, we could put a lot more through here, but we don't think the fan experience would be as good. So that's something we strive for. There will be days when there'll be a few more. Um, there are a couple days coming up that will be very, very heavily attended. Um, if our fans know, and I will just repeat it, and it's in the, the press uh, information will be passed out, if you go to chiefs.com forward slash training camp, you'll have all the details of our schedule. You'll also have all the details of how to get tickets, where um, the directions to get here. And then if you go to our app, which is free, um, we'll give you up-to-date push notifications on what's happened. Every single year, weather plays a part in training camp. The reality is that our players have to be safe, our fans have to be safe, so we're going to be extra vigilant on that. And we will use the app to get the messaging out there if there are any changes. Um, one last point on tickets. We are um, oversubscribed on a number of days already. Um, we are holding back a number of tickets to release 7 a.m. in the morning of, of every day. Um, those tickets will vary based on the day, but um, if you are in town and do want to come and haven't gotten a ticket, make sure you're following through the app and through the website because there may be some tickets that get released. 
One other point I'll make on the, um, the demand. Um, we're very proud of this. We're one of, I believe it's four teams out of the 32 National Football League teams that actually go away to training camp. Um, it's a part of our culture. It's a part of our experience. We hope to continue that. Um, this year, uh, specifically, we will have 19 practices open to our fans. That's the most in the National Football League. We're proud of that. It's an important part of our aspect, and it's great that we can uh, enable that to happen. Um, I also want to acknowledge, um, you know, our players are in the middle of the heat of the battle here, and they do such an amazing job with our fans. I want to publicly thank them for that. Um, Coach has a meeting tomorrow night with the players, and then Clark will address the team on Sunday night. And the messages that go into that are very detailed and a lot of things that go into the, the camp. But one of the messages is consistent is that our fans give us the ability to do what we do. So when you're here, make sure that you're acknowledging that. And our players do an amazing job of that. The other thing that makes this work is Brett Veach, our general manager, and Andy Reid, our head coach, who understand the importance of not only of giving the fans a great experience, but understand the importance of acknowledging all these people you see around the room in Chiefs jerseys and Chiefs uh, sweatshirts who are our staff who work every single day to make this work. And they are a part of this team and they are a part of this family. When you have that acknowledgement at that level, the leaders of our team, it really um, trickles down into the entire organization. That's something that I'm very proud to be a part of. Obviously, the anticipation is building. It'll be an exciting few days coming up here, and then we'll get into the grind of the camp. A couple points on camp that, uh, if you'll allow me, I'll just read these because there's some details here I want to make sure I get right. All tickets must be reserved in advance. Uh, all tickets are free with the exception of three days where there's a $5 per ticket uh, cost. $5 parking fees every day. We do have two exclusive season ticket member days. They are already sold out. <laughs> Um, and then, as I said, our website and our app is the place to go for any uh, additional information that you may need. In closing, I'll just say um, proud and privileged to be part of a reigning Super Bowl champ, proud and privileged to be part of a back-to-back -back champ. And I will say from my perspective, Coach and Brett and the players will talk about this, but from my perspective, um, we are really embracing as an organization and as a team the opportunity that is in front of us, which is to create even more history in the National Football League team and be the first, in the National Football League and be the first team to go back to back to back. So we're excited about that challenge and that opportunity. Yeah, we, I was asked this earlier, and I responded with, why wouldn't we? Um, it's been a great partnership. It's been something that, as I said, we're proud to have been here 14 of the last 15 years. We expect that to continue. We'll do what we always do, um, and it's a great relationship because we will get through this camp. At the end of camp, we'll sit down and talk about what went well, where are the challenges, what was better this year than last year, what was worse than last year, what can we do to improve? and. With Andy, with his team, with Elizabeth and her team, um, it's, there's an understanding of well, what do we need to do to make it great? And year in and year out, they have responded to be able to do that. We've gotten support from the state of Missouri to do some of the things we've done over the years. We've made improvements this past off season to this camp. Some of those improvements have been specific to our fan experience, um, which you'll see there as camp opens. Um, so as we continue that process, we fully expect to be back. Uh, there's a reason we have extensions that are a year or two years long. Um, we think that flexibility is important on both sides. Um, you know, a lot of stuff is coming up in this, uh, in our future, when you look at not only the stadium stuff, which I'm sure we'll get to, but also World Cup and how do we, uh, you know, how do you plan for that as it relates to training camp? So we just wanna have some flexibility there. But I, I think our track record speaks for itself, that, you know, every couple of years we extend our deal and we fully expect to do that going forward. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, the negotiations started before I got here. 
I was a part of the final year of those negotiations. Uh, my first year was our last year at River Falls. Um, and I would say this, without Charlie Shields and without Dirk Clark, we are not here today. That's, that's as simple as I can put it. And their support, especially on the front end, was critical to getting this done. When you're negotiating a deal like this, and again, I was at the back end of that negotiation, but when you're in the middle of those negotiations, when it's something brand new that hasn't been done before, that includes a lot more than just, okay, what dates do you need the facilities? It includes building those fields out of there. It includes putting a deal together that makes sense to put an indoor facility here that not only benefits the team when they're here and makes it really efficient for us from a training camp perspective, but creates added value to the university from a recruiting standpoint, from their teams, but also from their student experience. It, it takes a lot, and it takes a real commitment, and those two were leaders through that process. Yeah, 14 out of 15, so a couple Super Bowls in there, so it's been a good, good run for us. Yeah, I, I think um, I would acknowledge that you know, we've, we've praised the university um, for all that they've done to make this work. It's a burden on the university. So early on, we had a lot of conversations about how we felt it was very important that our training camp be free. Um, I won't go into all the details, but if you get into the research of it, there was a reason competitively to be free. Early on, that has changed as the rules have changed. But we felt like it was important. We had started the process. We wanted to be free. We also acknowledge that it is a burden, um, not only on their staff, but financially as an organization. So we picked a way to create three different days where the university could charge uh, in order to, to recoup some of those costs. Um, they're high, high demand days, so it makes sense that those be the days. And then we added parking. You know, The reality is that charging for parking is more about operating the parking efficiently. There are expenses that go into that. So we want a great fan experience. They want to be able to cover their costs, so it just makes sense. I think it's a very prudent way to do it, and I think that um, the value far exceeds the cost. Yeah, I think it's less about money. I don't think you look at training camp as a revenue opportunity per se. I think it's the experience. Um, we want to create a great fan experience. We also want to fo win football games. And Coach is a strong believer that the bonding that goes on during this time, the fact that the team sleeps together, eats together, meets together, um, it creates interactions that you don't get when you're at home. I've talked to a lot of NFL teams about how they structure their training camp when they're doing it at their facility. Um, there are definite pros, there are definite cons. Um, so that's something we'll weigh into this. I think the reality is that in our situation, this has gone so well, um, it factors into that discussion. Anyone else have questions for Andrew Cooper? Another two part question. <clears throat> Yeah, so first part of the question, I would say, I would answer it this way, uh, regardless of the November situation, because I'm not sure the details of that just yet and the reality of that. Um, I think it's important to acknowledge that when we were going into the vote in April, um, we felt like, and this is a tribute, I believe, to Clark Hunt and to John Sherman, like the tradition of this town, the tradition of the two organizations, the tradition of the Truman Sports Complex, we'd always been together. Everything about that um, process was we were together. And we felt like it was appropriate that we be together in that effort. Um, going into the vote and leading up to it and then post vote, we were very clear that that was, we were all in to make that option work. If it didn't work, we'd have to look at other options. 
early on in those discussions, we were pretty clear with the Royals that it probably makes sense if we're looking at other options to look separately. Um, there was a conversation that happened shortly after the vote uh, between Clark and John, where Clark called to just to have a discussion about this kind of makes sense for us, want to get your feelings on it, and John was in complete agreement. We said all along these are two very different projects, and um, it made sense to go separately. So that's what we've done. We're still in contact. Um, texted with the Royals leadership team yesterday. Um, so we're still in contact, but we are jointly in agreement that it makes sense to go separately. Yeah, Starbond. So I've said this uh, publicly. We appreciate the efforts that the Kansas legislator had, legislature made um, to really supercharge Starbonds to make it uh, make sense for a professional sports team to come over there and take advantage of that. It uh, is consistent with what we've talked about, that we want to look at options. It, it seems, uh, at least my general understanding of it, that this is a really good option for us to consider, so we appreciate that. Uh, we are in discussions with the folks in Kansas. Um, we are in discussions, continue our discussions with the folks in Missouri, um, talking to various leaders. There seem to be other options that are coming up now on the Missouri side, so we appreciate that. And it's consistent with our strategy, which was if this doesn't work, which was our, our plan, then we got to look at options, and now we'll have a couple options to look at. You guys will seriously consider going to Missouri? Yeah, we'll seriously consider all options, absolutely. Yeah, I think when you talk about deadlines, really the deadline is how can you be up and running in a new facility or a renovated facility in January for the 31 season, right? And <clears throat> those are two different timelines, right? If you're renovating Arrowhead GHA field, you're looking at you know, an existing um, structure. It's something we've done a lot of work on, so it's a little bit um, smaller lead time you need there. If you're building something new either in Missouri or in Kansas, it extends that lead time by about a year and a half. So we feel like we're in that window right now. Um, we feel like it would be, you know, we need to get something done in the next six months to figure out and be in a good position. Um, and so that's the timeline we're working on. Directly, Sam, as it relates to your question on um, Missouri, I, th I think they're working very diligently to try to figure out what makes sense. There are some realities that come into play. You mentioned the primary. You know, until they have an idea on August 4th where they stand with who is going to be the uh, presumptive governor, um, they really can't go too far. Uh, but I will say that we are in some pretty significant conversations with leadership on the Missouri side. Uh, taking that into consideration, like if, if this happens this, if this happens this, um, how do we go? So there are some conversations that are going on on both sides. Clark, when you say you're considering all options, <clears throat> how much of an option, how much do you really feel open to considering? Very much so. Yeah, very much so. I would say every option's on the table. Yeah, I think given the results of the vote, we have a much more measured response to that, which is we want to look at our options. Um, we went all in and failed pretty, pretty badly. Um, and obviously a lot of different situations, a lot of different uh, variables in that. But we, we're looking at it as a measured response of what makes the most sense for, what makes the most sense for our fans, what makes, most the, makes the most sense for our franchise, and this organization, and what makes the most sense and can have the biggest impact on this region. And I think the, the positive of this is that we do have options, and we'll consider those. I've said this to you guys multiple times. This is a generational decision. This is gonna impact the future of this franchise for generations. We gotta get it right, and we are going to do the due diligence. We are going to take our time to do it right. So Sam's question, there is a reality on the timing. You can only take so much time if you're going to get it right. So that window is starting to close a little bit. So we have not had substantive conversations about putting anything back in front of the voters. I think if you look at the history in Jackson County, and the way things have been done in the past, if we follow the same path, it'd be difficult to really create a partnership like this that does not include a public vote. Um, we have committed, and I've had this conversation 
at multiple levels on the Missouri side. We have committed that if we go to a public vote, we'll do it in a way which is much more final before we get to the vote. That we'll have a lot of, oops, sorry, we'll have a lot of the facts, we'll have a lot of the details determined before we go. And that's, I think it's important to acknowledge that those, we'd have to have agreements on the state side as well as, <coughs> excuse me, on the county side and have support, frankly, from the county. I think we're looking at all options on that front. Um, we're just getting into the Kansas side um, and all the options that creates. Um, as I think has been acknowledged, when we look at both Kansas and Missouri, um, we look at both the training facility and the stadium. Um, so there may be different approaches to how you um, approach a training facility separate from a stadium. Um, there may be you know, a, an approach where you put them together um, one of the limiting factors is just acreage. Um, anything we do as we go forward, which, no matter which side of the state line it is, will include 20,000 parking spaces because tailgating is such a core element of our experience and our brand. Um, so that sort of limits you on the stadium side. A lot less limitations when you look at a training facility. Um, and the reality is if you look around the league at these training facilities that are being built, you know, they become economic drivers in themselves um, with the development you can do around those. Yeah, I don't have a firm date for you today. I would just go back to what I mentioned earlier, which is look at the timeline and work back from 31. Uh, it's important for everybody to understand that we, we are playing Kansas City Chiefs football home games, if it's not an international game, at GHA Field at Arrowhead through 2031. That, that is our plan. That is what we're doing. Um, so what we have to have is somewhere to play our games for the 31 season. In order to do that, you got to back up. When do you start planning? When do you start building? How do you renovate or build new? Um, if you're renovating it, how are you doing it over seasons while you're still playing there? A lot of those factors play into that, um, and that goes back to the option point. We need to have options. We need to have those options to a point of definition um, to be able to make a decision. Um, and so that's the process we're in right now. I think they're both really complicated. I, I don't think there's a simple path here on either side. Um, there's a lot of work to be done on Kansas to see what the reality of that is. Um, and we don't take that for granted. And, um, you know, as it was amazing what Kansas did. It was, um, it was good to see, and we really appreciate the leadership, uh, Ty Masterson, Dan Hawkins, um, the various people, um, the governor, um, in putting that together. That's the first step. Um, once you get through that, it gets really complicated in how you do that. And you know, for us, the good news is that there, it creates more options. So you know, there are multiple options in Kansas that we can look at. Yeah, we, we met with Frank post-vote, um, had a good conversation with his team. Um, we've met with the governor um, multiple times. Um, so we're in discussions. Um, we're having discussions. We sort of outlined the things we need to go forward, uh, one of them being we need um, commitments before we go back to a public vote. Um, so yeah, you raise valid issues. Uh, the reality is that we're going to have to get to a point where we're all in line to go forward in Missouri, and we're hopeful that we can do that. Yeah, so I'm not going to get into the specific commitments because we're not there yet. Um, I think it's important that we have commitments, that we have agreement, we have support. 
it was a challenge to go through this process, as was just pointed out by Todd. Um, you know, when you have somebody internally who's against it, actively against it. So we'd want to be aligned um, before we go forward in Missouri. Um, we'd want to be aligned before we go forward in Kansas. Yeah, I think six months from today, we're going to have to have a really good idea of where we are. We may not be done done, but we need to be, have a really good idea. I, I'll go back to the point I made earlier. When you're building a new stadium, there's a lot more lead time than when you're renovating. Um, so that's why that one's a little bit longer and will push us a little bit faster to make a decision. I'll, I'll just acknowledge, because I'm sure the follow-up question is coming. That timeline kind of plays into the Missouri timeline as well, right? So if we're on that timeline with Kansas, we need to make a decision, then Missouri sort of has to play to that same timeline. Um, so that, that's the window I'd give you. Yeah, I mean, he's acknowledged that. Um, you know, going into the campaign, he was very clear about that point, and then he's made public statements post um, that, you know, if it, and during, is if it failed, that we'd have to look at all our options, and so he's actively engaged in looking at all the options. If I were to go to last week, I don't want to see Yeah, I would say this about the uh, report card. Um, you know, you hate to see that, and you hate to be on the other side of that. Um, you do have to sort of open your eyes to it and listen, um, so you learn from it. One thing I think is important that um, probably isn't as well known is we met with our leadership team and walked through it and said, what's real, what's not? We had a great meeting. Um, it's a smaller group of players, um, but it's the leaders of the team. Um, and in that meeting, we shared with him, with them, that past, you know, in the middle of last season, we had committed to a three and a half million dollar upgrade to our entire uh, cafeteria. You guys walk through that when you're going through there. When you walk through it the next time, you'll see a whole different space. Um, it was really driven by the fact that we need to get more, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> more efficient in how we are able to prepare and produce food. Um, some of our back of the house things were out of date. So we looked at that and said, well, if we're gonna do that, let's do the whole thing. So that's one of the big things we shared. The second thing is, you know, we have a great indoor, um, but it wasn't air conditioned. Um, so we committed to make that happen. We had done that, you know, in the middle of last season. Um, so that was in response to the year before. So a lot of those things hadn't been communicated to the players. So they looked at this year and said, what's going on? So once we were able to have that meeting, the feedback was really positive. I think specific to the locker room, um, you know, a couple of the guys said, our locker room's great. We actually like our locker room. Don't mess with it. If you're going to mess with anything, make changes here and here, and that's what we've done. We'll continue to do that. Um, hate to bring it back to the renovation and new stadium question, but you also got to look at if you've got a new training facility, potentially, you know, how much more money do you invest in this? We'll put $7 million into that facility this year. Um, that'll get us through 31. Um, but, you know, what do you do going forward and how do you adjust? And over the years, and you guys have seen some of this, you know, we converted that um, turf field into grass. That was something that we felt was really important for our players and our coaches. It's continuous um, as we go year in, year out. Yeah, I think that'll depend on the financing of the deal. I know that uh, Legislator Avica has, has mentioned a different tax structure, raised different kinds of money to compete directly with Kansas. You know, then we'd have to look at um, a new building. We're open to it. Um, we're open to a new building uh, on the complex. We're open to a new building somewhere else. We're open to a dome or an outdoor um, as a new building. We're also very open to renovating 
DHA field at Arrowhead because I think it's, it is what it is. It's iconic. It's something that's unique. Um, and we'd love to be able to do that. It's just going to come down to what makes the most sense. And, and I want to reiterate the factors that go into that decision are what's best for our fans, what's best for this franchise for the next few decades. Um, and that's a really important decision for us. Yeah, so let me just deal with uh, sports gambling as an issue, and then I'll come back to how it relates. Um, I want to publicly acknowledge uh, Bill DeWitt from the St. Louis Cardinals because he has really led a consortium of uh, professional sports teams in the state of Missouri, and his efforts and his team's efforts have really, they've done the heavy lifting uh, for all the teams, and, and we truly appreciate that. I have been, I've spent more time in Jefferson City on that issue than I have in just about any other issue. Um, we really believe that it's the right thing. We think it's good for the state. We think it's good for you know, fans of the sport um, and other sports. Um, and we think it's a proven entity. It's something that's worked on you know, pretty significant level in just about every state surrounding the state of Missouri. So we are very much in support of that. Um, you know, it's gone through a couple of different uh, scenarios over the years and how we're gonna get that done. Bill and his team put together a plan um, which they are really um, working towards um, to get that done, and we're hopeful that it gets done. As it relates to the stadium decision, I don't think that is a um, significant factor in the decision. I think it would be a nice amenity to add on to um, if we get something done in Missouri. Uh, it's something we'd be able to add to whatever we were going to do here, but I don't think that's, that's not a big factor in making the decision one way or the other. Yeah, so we'll, we'll weigh. Obviously, we've got a pretty high priority in uh, the political asks and conversations that we have as it relates to the stadium and the, and the um, facility. So I think we'll weigh how actively we'll be involved. We'll be supportive for sure. And that's why I want to acknowledge Bill. I mean, he, he has really led all of the sports teams, and, and we appreciate that. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, guys. Thank you. Yeah.